see our soloist. always good to have our ensemble open our worship service and I appreciate that you guys are on time and starting our worship service a little early this morning. Okay. So uh, today is, uh, anybody interested in, <laughs> third Sunday of Easter and then you can see that I'm still wearing the white uh, stole which means we are in Easter season. Um, so um, I hope that you guys had an opportunity to go out and enjoy the outdoor this week. Did you do that? Yes. Anybody started doing a little gardening? Yes. Yeah, wonderful, yes. Let's hope that you know, the weather stayed like this, will not have any snow or anything like that. Cross the finger. A uh, couple of people met last week to discuss how we can make our church just beautiful outdoor, the prettier and also just you know, more attractive. So I just truly appreciate our trustee and also all those people who are taking care of outdoor. Now I'm gonna invite you to wave your hands to each other and say, peace be with you. And then we're gonna do the little greeting, which is a little longer, so you have to pay attention. So you say to each other, God loves you. And then the next line you need to do is, there is a nothing you can do about it. All right, can you say it to each other? All right, God loves you. There is a nothing you can do about it. Very good, let's do one more time. All right, maybe turn to the other person and say, okay? God loves you. There's a nothing you can do about it. Amen, amen, all right. I think that's a wonderful news that, you know, there's a time in our life we kind of wonder that if God loves us and or it's a conditional when we are good, God loves us more. When we are not good, maybe God doesn't love us. But, you know, it's a promise and then we have a no control. Amen? Amen? All right. So April 17, which is a, this Wednesday, is a very important day for our church. So I'm going to invite Lily and Nevea and maybe Tracy too, all three mighty ladies to come out and make some announcement about. And they also say thank you to our congregation for the general support and everything. So come on out and share with us what's April 17th is so great deal to us to remember.
Good morning, I am Nevea. We would like to tell you, you thank you so much for helping us reach our goal for the Heifer Project. And oh. with the extra money, <laughs> with the extra money that gets donated, we will pick something else from the list to send for the Heifer Project. We would like to, you to join us on Wednesday, April 17th at Pizza Ranch, 4 to 8. Pizza Ranch is located at 4794 Blue Step Road, Rosco, Illinois. Um, for our goal, we went over our goal um, last Sunday. What was the goal? Huh? 1,000. 1,000. 1,150 dollars. Woohoo! All right, that's good. Thank you for helping us. All right, that's good. Okay, let's give a big hand to Tracy, Lily, and Nevea for their work. As they ask, April 17, I know that you have some set meal and things, but if weather's a good, you feel like you want to have a pizza, it's going to be a ranch, a pizza ranch in Roscoe. And if you need a ride, uh, you give me a call and I find somebody else to pick you up. All right, okay. <laughs> Maybe, maybe Andy, maybe, uh, maybe Deb, okay, maybe, maybe Doug, we'll see. <laughs> All right, so starting today, uh, the order of our service has a little bit of a change. I don't know, some of you guys pay attention, but we will do the offering right after pastoral prayer. So all the prayers like at the beginning, uh, it will help uh, our children's message and everything uh, for our uh, you know, Sunday school Everything will be that way. And then we'll see the how it's going to go. And then um, just, you know, trying something new and see that, you know, things are working better. But I know that we like the things as they are. So um, if you, even though you feel a little bit of like, you know, strange, weird, you know, like, you know, not usual, uh, pray that you will embrace and also try out something new and see that it's going to make uh, more sense and also just, you know, make the worship service smoother. So today we'll start a new sermon series called The Lord's Prayer. Um, and then uh, for our closing hymn, we'll sing The Lord's Prayer, which we are very familiar with. Uh, every communion Sunday we've been singing it. So I'm going to invite us to sing that song together. But then after you sing that song, I uh, hope that you're not looking for the regular communion. It's just we're singing because it is uh, the Lord's Prayer sermon series, not because it is a communion Sunday. Amen? Amen. All right. So um, I know that uh, just you know, a lot of us dealing with some disappointment, anxiety, or some family issues, or just a lot of things, I hope that you continue to rely on God. And then from today's uh, sermon, you find that uh, comfort and also strength from our uh, you know, God that who give us the gift of prayer so we can uh, pray and also be close to God. Any announcement to share? Nothing? All right. Uh, ensemble is always open for new people, right? So if you like to um, you know, have some you know, the musical talents develop, you never know. You know, God gives us just many talents that we, we think we don't have it. So now I'm going to invite um, Deb Arms. Uh, Jay uh, is the scheduled, our lay reader, but uh, he's on his duty. So now his loving wife, uh, Deb, Deb's going to be our lay reader for today. Good morning. Good morning. If it's comfortable, would you please stand and join me in today's call to worship? The Lord is my strength and my salvation. I fear no evil in the midst of darkness. We give thanks to our wonderful counselor who is always creating new life and bringing hope in the midst of despair. Let us shout new songs of thanksgiving for resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lead us into your presence, Lord. Honor the Lord. Meet us in the time of worship. May we embrace your gift of our and our praying prayers. Amen. And if you remain standing and join in the United Methodist hymnal number 98. 
To God be the glory, verses 1 and 3. song. Please be seated. We're going to move to the joys uh, and concerns and any prayer requests. So if you have some, please raise your hand and our ushers will bring the microphone. Okay, we have a Karami first and after Mark. Hi, I just wanted to uplift a joy. Uh, Riella, who has been home for a while, um, is actually starting to regain her vocabulary. That's awesome. Um, little words, nothing major, but in our eyes, that's always a good thing. Um, she does, her mom does have one concern and ask prayers for is she has a open wound still from when she was in the hospital and they blew a vein. It is not closing, so they're concerned of future infections happening. We'll um, I, sorry, I do ask for prayers for myself as this week I go into a court hearing in regards to my little kids. Mm -hmm. um, doing a good job of letting him handle it, but it's still my kids. All I ask is that whatever is meant to be is be, and just let me get my nerves back under control. That's a good attitude, and also um, what you're going with the spirit, so we'll pray for you, Karen, and for the best for the, your family. All right, Mark. Well, I just thought I'd tell everybody about, uh, give an update on my buddy Scott that lost his eye. Um, he, uh, it, it's progressing and, you know, getting better. And he saw his first color the other day. Uh, it was red, so he must have got a Russian eye uh, <laughs> when they gave him his transplant. But, uh, yeah, he can see the first colors here. So, thank you. Wonderful. All right. We'll keep Scott in prayer. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, some of you know uh, Brenda Westfell. Uh, she is from Westerly Willow, and she'll have a knee surgery on Wednesday. And then uh, many of you guys know Mark Hoy. He will have a heart surgery on Tuesday morning. And then uh, many of you also know Chaplain Ellen Schuler of Wesley Willow. 
he will have a thir uh, he will have a surgery on Thursday. So we have a lot of people having surgery. So keep all of them in your prayer. Amen. All right. Is Alex doing okay, Jane? Okay. All right. We'll keep her in prayer as well. And it's so good to have a choice back with us. Yes, that's good. All right. Let's pray together. Holy God, we give you thanks for gathering us for the worshiping this hour. Guide us to give our whole hearts and receive your words of life today. As we begin another week, strengthen us with your Holy Spirit. May we stay tuned in your will and your vision in our personal lives and in our church community. Lord, we are in need of hearing the power and strength of Jesus' resurrection every day. Renew our faith so we know that your grace is always sufficient for us. Divine Healer, at this time, we lift up those who are recovering from illness, those who are rec recuperating from their recent surgery, injury, and other treatment, and all those um, who will have a surgery this week. We lift up Mark, Brenda, uh, Chaplain Allen. We also lift up Alex, Wyatt, Rail, and also Karami and her children um, as uh, they have a court date. Just give her the strength and calm attitude. We also lift up the continuous healing for Joyce, Judy, uh, Sue, and Tony, and all others in our hearts. Father God, we give you thanks for the good report on Scott's recovery and Rayo's recovery as well. Uh, continue to put your uh, powerful hands upon them. We ask your spirit to provide comfort for those who are grieving the loss of their loved ones. Continue to surround them with your powerful peace and assurance of eternal life. We also give you thanks for all birthdays and anniversaries. We ask your special protection on all those who struggle with their finance and also other issues when they're in the transition between two jobs. Anoint your spirit of blessings on those who are looking for new chapters of their life. We lift up our teachers, students, first responders, servicemen and women, all in your protection and grace. Watch over the people in Palestine, Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, and other areas impacted by war, conflict, famine, and natural disaster. We ask your special mercy on those who are living in violence, abuse, addiction, hatred, and unforgiveness with your healing and redeeming power. We ask you, Lord, the special blessings on our Christian education team, confirmation group, uh, music ministry team, and mission and worship and congregational care and outreach ministry of our church. At Alders Gate, as we dream our future to serve and reach out our community, Help us hear Jesus' voice and feel his compassion for the least, the lost, and the last. Give us the spirit of unity, humbleness, and prayerfulness to work together and serve others. Remind us that church is a people and we are called to reflect the love of Jesus Christ to others. Watch all of us over, especially those who feel lonely and depressed. Shape our church mission once again with a Christ heart, so we can be equipped and sensitive to the needs of our community. Caring Father, we, can do, we cannot do ministry by ourselves, so we ask you to inspire us to continue to honor you and love our neighbors. As a one body of Christ, help us find ways to connect with the younger generation and know their needs and hunger. Loving God, we acknowledge that every day is a gift from you. Nurture our gratitude every day. So we follow you diligently. We pray all this in your mighty name. Amen. Now I'm going to invite our uh, usher to bring our offering plate. And just, just want to say that Aldersgate UMC is a very grateful for your ongoing financial and there is a prayerful your support for the various ministry. I'm going to invite us to all stand up and sing our doxology, the traditional one. That, uh, which is in page 95, praise God, and um, they'll bring the offering.
Today's offering prayer, Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened up the gates of everlasting life. Grant that we, who are joyful over the power of our Lord's resurrection, may join the renewal mission of your spirit. As we offer these signs of our gratitude, deepen us in faith. Use these gifts to expand your kingdom and share the good news of your risen Son. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know if I have any children. Okay. Um, Lacey? So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, prayer. And I know the little kids are coming. So the, we're still in the transition uh, time. And then the whole thing about this, uh, the children's message in the middle, and they have a Sunday school, and we have some kids in nursery. And then it's, it's kind of hard to have them to like bring them back and then just bring them out. So we, we try to figure out the best time for us. Nevea, come here, yes. So the, the, when we say, okay, good, okay. When we say prayer, sometimes prayer, people think it's just you talking to God, and then you tell God what to do and also just bless the whatever you want. But I think prayer is a lot of time listening. So I want you to touch your ear. How many ears you have? Two. How many mouth you have? One. That means many times in our life, you have to listen twice and talk. But I talk a lot, right? So I better, I better pray more. So when you do prayer, uh, instead of you talk, you just be quiet and ask God what God wants today for me, being a good uh, daughter and also good sister and also good friend and also always try to be loving and patient and also uh, listening to other people. Amen? All right, let's pray together. And try to listen to God's voice. Thank you, God, for these children and youth that, who are seeking your grace. We pray that throughout their life, they experience the power of prayer, listening to your voice, and be quietly, just follow your will, and also just be honest with you all the time. We pray all this in your mighty name. Amen. All right. Have fun in Sunday school and nursery. We will move on now, song of praise. Uh, it's a sanctuary. It's in your, uh, the Black Thin book, page number 2064. It's a short song, so we will sing twice, and the words will be on the screen. Today's scripture reading is from Luke chapter 11, 1 through 4, Psalm 139, verses 1 through 2, and 7 through 10. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his, disi his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. 
Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not into temptation. From Psalm, O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. Where can I go from your spirit? When, where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your hand will hold me fast. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Deb, for reading scriptures for us this morning. So as a first grade student learned the Lord's Prayer in Sunday school, uh, after church, he went home and told his parents that he knows the Lord's Prayer. So that's great, the parents said. Let's hear it. And the little boy proudly declared, Our Father who art in heaven, how do you know my name? That's cute. Hallowed be thy name. How do you know my name? So today we start a new sermon series on the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a prayer we say every Sunday. Many of us memorize it when we were very young. This is a prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Prayer is more than saying magic words to God. It's a more than offering up all our laundry list of wishes and needs. Prayer is drawing close to the heart of God. It's a growing in our relationship and our intimacy with God. During this series, we will focus on three different parts of the Lord's Prayer. Today, we'll focus on the first two words of the prayer, Our Father. I'll begin by saying a word of introduction about the Lord's Prayer. Then we'll consider God's invitation for people of God to draw near to know and to be fully known by God, our Abba Father. Let's start with a word of introduction. The Lord's Prayer is recorded in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. In Luke chapter 11, Jesus offered this prayer after his disciples asked him to teach them how to pray. When you read it, you notice that the version you read in Luke's gospel is shorter version of the Lord's Prayer that we pray today. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus offers the Lord's Prayer in the middle of the larger teaching on prayer. During the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus teaches people how to pray. Specifically, he tells them not to babble like the Gentile when they pray. He tells them not to turn prayer into a public display of piety. Instead, Jesus says, we should go into our room and close the door and pray sincerely and honestly to God. Then Jesus offered the Lord's Prayer, the longer version that we are all familiar with. Here is a second word of background information about the Lord's Prayer. It's a single most important prayer for Christians. The Lord's Prayer was so important that by the end of first century, Christians were taught to say this prayer three times a day at morning, noon, and night. This was also the prayer used every time Christian received communion. This was also the prayer offered whenever anyone was baptized. Throughout Christian history, the Lord's Prayer was among the three most important lessons for Christians who would not only learned about it, but all memorized it. From a young age, children memorize Apostles' Creed, which summarize core Christian beliefs. The Ten Commandments, which summarize core Christian ethics. 
the Lord's Prayer, which summarizes the core Christian spirituality. In the Lord's Prayer, all believers are invited to experience the power of prayer so we can become spiritually mature. Saint Theophan, he is also called the Reclus, he was a Russian Orthodox priest in the 18th century. In the last confirmation class, we learned about the Orthodox Church. Saint Theophan offered this reflection about the power of prayer. He said, prayer is the test of everything. Prayer is also the source of everything. Prayer is a driving source and director of everything. If prayer is right, everything is right. For prayer will not allow anything to go wrong. Here is an easy way to remember this. Much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. One more note before we dive into prayer itself. Jesus did not intend for the Lord's Prayer to become magical words that we say in case of emergencies. It's also not the only prayer that Jesus intended for us to say. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus offered the Lord's Prayer in response to the disciples' request. When they asked Jesus how they should pray, Jesus offered them this model for prayer containing three movements. So let's consider each movement separately. This morning, we'll focus on the first movement of the Lord's Prayer. So verse 9 said, this then is the how Jesus said, how you should pray. So first movement is worship. Repeat after me, worship. Okay, let's do that again. Repeat after me, worship. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father. The first movement in the Lord's Prayer is worship. You may have heard this, that is adoration or praise. Jesus teaches us to begin our prayer by focusing on God, the nature and identity of God. And as we focus on the hearts and minds on God, our Father, we begin with worship. We begin by centering ourselves on the one who has the power. And then we are embracing and also claiming the power and privilege of people who call God Abba Father. So let me ask you a question. What image of God do you have in mind when you pray the Lord's Prayer? Our picture of God impacts how we pray, what we say, and what we expect as a result of our prayers. So what do you think about God shapes how we engage God in our prayer and live your life as a followers of Jesus Christ? It's noteworthy that Jesus teaches us to call God Abba Father, which means Daddy. This is a very intimate term that children use at a very young age. Jesus teaches us to call on God as a children who call on their father. God is not calling us to religion. It is a relationship between father and his children. Now, if you're like most people, Calling God our Father may be a very short section. After all, we have a lot of other things to say to God. Primarily, my things, my stuff, and my demands. And the first section doesn't seem all that important. So we'll open with a prayer, a few words like, Our Father in Heaven, Loving God, Holy and Most Awesome God, and then we may throw a couple of thank yous here and then, and then we'll say, okay, now get down to business. Here's the things that are really on my mind. I know this described my prayer many times. How about you? Do we need a time of mass compassion? If we remain at this 
immature stage of prayer, we will never ever experience nor comprehend the purpose and power of prayer. If prayer is nothing more than our wish list to a heavenly genie, and then we miss the joy and peace which comes with prayers. It reminds me of the prayer of a little child who got confused one night and said, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If he hollows, let him go. Ini mini mani mo. <laughs> Jesus teach us to approach our prayers differently. He teaches us to begin with worship. He invites us to open our prayer by focusing on God, to take our eyes off ourselves and all the things going in our lives. Jesus invites us to pray, and when we pray, to start with God. Remember who we are addressing. Acknowledge God's character and faithfulness. Recognize that God is the creator of the whole universe, the one who made the sun and moon and stars, the one for whom all things are possible, for whom nothing is possible, impossible. When we pray, Jesus teaches us to remember that God knew us before we were born, when we were still in our mother's wombs. To acknowledge that God knows us completely, the good and the bad and the ugly, even the number of the, head, the, the hairs of our head, 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 head. The writer of Psalm 139 reminds us that God knows every part of our lives. There's a nothing we can say or do that is hidden from God's view. I have uh, two daughters. When they were young, they would play in their room quietly. I always knew they were being mischievous when I walked near their room and I could hear them whisper to each other, Mom is coming. When I picked my head into their room, I would ask, Girls, what are you doing? And they always responded, nothing. <laughs> in their minds, their mom did not know what they were doing. Every now and then, I had to remind them that God made moms with eyes in the back of our head, so we moms always know what they're doing. The psalmist reminds us that there's a nowhere we can go to hide from God's vision. There's a nowhere we can go, and that is beyond the reach of God's love. When we pray, Jesus invites us to open our prayers by claiming the truth that God knows what's on our hearts and minds, and even before they come out of our mouth. So the next time when you pray, begin with the worship. Acknowledge that you're not praying to a distant cosmic watchmaker, but to one who can address as our Heavenly Father, my Daddy, Abba Father. As we worship our Heavenly Father, we can experience the holy mystery of prayer. We can experience that prayer is our declaration of dependence on the Almighty and loving God. Prayer is not about overcoming God's reluctancy and having God to do whatever we want in our own timing frame. It is not manipulating God or making God to do something God does not want to do it. Prayer is seeking God's heart with our hearts and draw near to God's love and purposes for our lives. Therefore, if there are going to be any significant and any spiritual growth, we all need time in prayer. In prayer, we allow God to influence our attitude, our choices, our behaviors, and even our deepest longings. Prayer is our posture of offering our thoughts, concerns, but also to receive the power of God, our Father, who, uh, who are in heaven, but we can always call God Abba Father. When we can do this, the nature, content, and attitude 
of our prayers change. Amen? I'll close with a story about a chaplain who visited a patient in the hospital. The patient was in hospice care, dying, and he knew it. The patient shared with the chaplain how he was so scared. Even though he tried to put up a strong front for his family, he was afraid of this whole experience. He was afraid of dying. The chaplain shared some scriptures with him and prayed for him. And then the chaplain encouraged him to pray in this way, to imagine himself as a child and Jesus sitting in the chair right next to his bed. She, the chaplain, told him that whenever he was scared, he could close his eyes and picture Jesus right next to him, sitting in the chair, ready to hold him in his arms. Well, several days later, the chaplain came back to visit this man, and the nurse told her that he had passed away the night before. Disappointed, the chaplain was about to leave when the nurse mentioned that the man died in a strange position. Sometime in the middle of the night, he had gotten out of his bed, sat on the floor, and rested his arms and head on the seat of the chair next to him, as if on someone's lap. He passed away peacefully. When we worship, we recognize the greatness, the love of the one we pray to. When we worship, our fear and anxiety disappear. So let us remember this first movement of the Lord's Prayer. When we pray, we worship our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Abba Father, teach us how to pray. Help us to move us from prayers that are lifeless, meaningless, laundry list to prayers that are inspiring, powerful, and life-changing. Help us to mature in our prayer life, to experience the fullness of your love and care for us as we seek to love and worship your Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite us to all stand up and we will sing our closing hymn, the Lord's Prayer, the one that we always sing on the Communion Sunday. Please rise, and when you feel comfortable, you can hold hand to the people right next to you as we sing this song.
Amen. I'm going to invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer more often this week, and then think about meaning of worship uh, as you deepen your prayer experience. Let's move to the benediction. And before we do that, I want to remind you that we have Pizza Ranch, uh, the event going on Wednesday. And also next Sunday will be Noisy Can Sunday. So you can bring your coins with you. Any other announcement? Look at the time. It's only 9.40. I'm following the good example of Terry last week. So hope that I keep it this way, but that's good. That's wonderful. All right, let's do our benediction together. Beloved children of God, we are given the gift of prayer. We are invited to draw near to God. May we continue our journey to our heavenly Father's heart, whose love endures forever. As we leave this gathering, let us bear witness to the news of God's incredible mercy and abundant grace. May our Lord now, sisters and brothers, go in the peace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, in the love of God, our Father, and the leading of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Jesus is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you.